So today's video is a first collaboration between myself and uh, Chris from Chris Titus Tech. He is a Microsoft slash Windows certified IT professional with quite a few qualifications under his belt. So I wanted to have him over as a guest advisor, expert guest advisor, by the way, in terms of troubleshooting part 10 of our series, whereby everything is working up until uh, the hard disk is fine but now you're having problems to boot into windows although i'm quite confident with my troubleshoot series but it's always good to have an expert person to back up or correct us or guide us just in case we're doing something wrong so i reached out to him he accepted he is mainly now doing funnily linux stuff uh, although he's windows qualified but i liked his video called why i don't use windows anymore or why i don't want to use windows anymore eight major reasons why something like that i'm going to leave all these details in the description so go and check him out give him some love and hopefully you'll subscribe to him i would certainly want to work with him in the future enjoy the footage which by the way was not planned it was not prepared and i did not edit much is just i cut down a bit because it was over 30 minutes so offering you a real conversation between two people having a banter having a chit chat on youtube which is something a bit rare thing nowadays everything's about scripting and uh, fancy background and uh, too much editing but this is real conversation bro enjoy and don't read too much into it <laughs> I don't want to repair anyone's PC anymore uh, locally. Sure. I'm sick of it because the main reason is, number one, they think that it doesn't matter who you are, what qualifications you have or experience, they bring a problem to you and you should be able to fix it within five minutes or even before mm -hmm. you have a look at it. They think you should know what the problem is. So I want to yep. ask you as a professional who's been in the field that... Is it always easy to troubleshoot, even if you think the symptoms is looks straightforward, like a screen not turning on? Do you think it's always easy? So it, it depends on what it is. And it, it also depends on your skill level too. But uh, for me, it, it seems almost like the harder the problem, the easier it is for me to solve it. <laughs> it's it, it, that's, it, it sounds like oxymoronic, but uh, hmm. you know, some of the most simple problems has given me the biggest headaches. So it, you just never know what you're going to get when you get a computer problem, whether it's going to take you a minute or whether it's going to take you, you know, four or five hours. You just don't know. Sometimes the most simple things can give you the, the biggest, biggest heartache and just cause you to just lose your mind sometimes just troubleshooting a random problem. Absolutely agree with you. Um, has it, have you ever spent like a whole weekend trying to troubleshoot and fix something and then give up? Uh, I've never, never not gotten something fixed. Uh, I always wow. tell people anything can be fixed. It's just a matter of time and money. Correct. Yeah. So this is my big problem with a lot of these people because one, they don't want to pay anymore for any tech repair. You know, this is a right. dead industry for yeah, the most part. A, Do you agree? It's a dead thing. Right. Yeah. I, agree uh, with I you. did a video two years ago um, and I talked about the computer repair business. I said, look, the, the traditional, uh, you know, of, of, uh, on the street shop tech, PC repair is dead. There's no money yep. in that. But obviously there's still tech around and you have to kind of think out of the box and, and create other kind of service to be able to get money from. But computer repair, phone repair, that's dead, right? Yep. Have you been um, repairing like personal uh, domestic uh, stuff or just corporate stuff? Um, it's been a while since. I, I still touch a couple workstations here and there, but um, I, I got my start in the early 2000s doing uh, <clears throat> residential. So I did touch quite a bit during that big boom during the Windows XP days where pretty much you just put it on the internet and it got infected. Uh, so yeah, I was part of that whole boom and I was repairing quite a few computers per day for uh, probably a better part of four or five years up until about 2008 is really when I, well, actually probably 2006 is when I really transitioned into the business realm. So right. I do a lot <clears throat> of server work now and, uh, I also, you know, still touch workstations and have to deal like with Windows 10 updates just randomly and things like that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, maybe it's because of the area that I'm in. I'm not sure whether it's everywhere in London or in UK, but people come mm -hmm. to me. They want a new, basically, Windows. They mm -hmm. want Microsoft Office and they want antivirus yep. and they want me to fix whatever hardware issue there is within the PC, whether it's dusty, whether it needs more, whatever it is. Right. Yep. And guess what? They want to pay 
25 pounds for it. <laughs> 20, which is about what? Like if, maybe 40 bucks or 40 something bucks. like okay. that. This is too, crazy. So it's crazy, but it's funny. You go back, you know, when I was, when I was doing it residential yeah. in the early 2000s, you're talking, there's times I would, I'd be charging upwards of four or $500 to repair one computer. Yep. That's, that's insane, which, you know, in far as pounds conversion, you're still looking probably three, 400 pounds. So, I mean, it was uh, that much of a lucrative business back then, but now the computers are so darn cheap. You have a problem. It's a lot of times just cheaper to throw that thing away and go uh, run out and buy a new one. Absolutely. And that's how cheap they've come <clears throat> because I mean, they used to all be, you know, four figures plus, you know, you're, you're paying at least over a thousand US dollars for it. So. I don't want to repair local anymore. I'd be wasting my time. I'd rather go online, create those tutorials. The same thing I would mm -hmm. do for a client, create, spend that time, create the tutorial, put it online. And sometimes um, some of the clients, they're okay for me to film it. So I can get the money uh, for the labor and then film the tutorial. And that's a better way for me. So I literally don't want to repair a single person's PC anymore. Would you agree with me? I shouldn't do that anymore. If you can get some kind of side benefit, like as far as recording and those types of things, put it on YouTube and inform the public. But if it's just something you've already done and you've done it to death and there's no educational value for outside world, yeah, it's probably not worth your time or effort to continue to repair those computers. I still have to do it uh, just <laughs> for like friends and stuff. I, I, I guess I'm too, too nice. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I do have a shirt that says, I will not repair your computer. <laughs> <but. laughs> I don't want that one. Yeah, that's Fair a good enough. one. That's a good one you should get. But uh, yeah, no, I, it's still occasional. I'll still do it. And I still like doing it every once in a while. But yeah, I would never do it as a, a side gig for sure. It's but, just, there's no money in it. Fair enough. Okay. Now, in terms of you post the tutorials online and you're trying to explain to people, um, the series I'm doing is trying to go in a logical way of eliminating one issue after the other. Yeah. Now, that's the other question I want to ask you professionally. Let, let's say you you have no display on your screen, your computer is turning on, you got some sort of LED lights, fan spinning, without having a look, can you tell what the problem is? Uh, it depends. So like, is you having the post beeps, you know, what, are, what is that? And then you have to look up for that motherboard if that's what the error is. You know, some motherboards have a little digit on there and it'll just tell you what's going on when if it's the screen not turning on, whether it's bad memory or you, maybe you didn't, you know, socket your CPU properly or, you know, you just uh, had a short circuit and it just fried part of the board. So, I mean, it, it can be a lot of different things. Right. But, you know, going through, I kind of looked at the first part of your, your 10 part series there, and it's really nice to see how you're stepping through or anybody can follow it. Uh, because you know, those, that's just a universal thing. You, there's all these steps that go into that, that, uh, you just kind of like a checklist you go down. Uh, most of it, you know, it's just up here, but yeah, you know, Hey, you can learn anything on YouTube of course. or, uh, online and, uh, just following that. So you're going to be good. So how do you think I should respond to someone who after I've, I've put up the series, they will literally write a single line to uh -huh. say, oh, my computer isn't turning on. Can you help me, please? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, I, uh, and I've even, <laughs> I've even done a video to, to say, look, can you please stop asking these kind of questions? <laughs> <laughs> There, there's always going to be those people, man. There's always going to be those people that, you know, you can't, uh, you know, that just can't help themselves. So, and I don't take offense to it. Uh, <laughs> I've been in the industry so long that there's always going to be that person or there's always going to be that negative person that just, you know, says, Hey, you'll point out that one thing that you might've forgotten in your tutorial video. And that's fine. Uh, I, I actually enjoy that to get those types of feedback if it's somewhat constructive. But yeah, it's seeing uh, people just throw their hands up and go, it just doesn't work. Just like, <laughs> well, it does. I mean, you just got to make sure you follow the steps. Did you make sure? And then uh, you usually if you walk through them and, and waste yeah. a lot of your time, you'll figure out there's there's something. Uh, probably the most aggravating <clears throat> thing I've ever had to do mm -hmm. over the phone in regards to that is I sat on the phone talking to somebody for about 20, 25 minutes. And then they finally, I was like, well, this just doesn't add up. I mean, it, are you seeing any lights and stuff? And he was like, well, no, but uh, we're in the middle of a power outage. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so it happens, man. Uh, you, you'll get all kinds of people. Seriously. Uh, yeah. 
That oh. reminds me, I have a I have an IT consultant friend as well. He's in India. He is telling me once he asked the person, "Could you uh, close the window?" And they got up, went and closed the window from the outside. <laughs> Not the window. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like point. impossible. Uh, right. Uh, that, that's um, a problem. Um, I mean, this is, I, I don't know how to kind of address this. Give me some advice. I want the people to stop asking me these questions because I want to engage with my audience. I want to respond to them, mm -hmm. but I can't respond to these questions because one question leads to a hundred questions for me and that's wasting my right. time. I, like, you know, we got there's no money in that as well. Just trying to engage with the audience, right? How, so probably, how would you tackle this? So it's probably the best thing. You already have kind of the overview of all your, your 10 part series that someone could walk through. But what if you're constantly getting these questions or you're getting multiples of the same kind mm. of question, typically you can create like a template, something that like a little checklist you. that they can actually go down and uh, easily go, hey, one, two, three, four. And then they can fill out that template, send it back to you. So you're not sitting there wasting your time going back and forth, back and forth. They can just fill out that template right. and uh, you're good. That's a good idea. I should get that done. So I'll send it to them and... Fair enough. Mm -hmm. But that should be done from a Patreon platform, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Get on, on YouTube. <laughs> I should do that. <laughs> All right, cool. If you like this kind of stuff, let me know in the comment section below. We may do more of that. I do certainly want to collaborate with people, bigger or smaller, doesn't matter. Although Chris only has got about 5.4 thousand subscribers right now, I think he will actually do much better than myself. He will go faster because he knows his stuff and I'm just a previous nurse from the NHS wannabe technician. Ain't that right, bro? I will see you in the next one. Enjoy the footage.